Easy, how are we? Johnny, I'm back. You're back. Yeah, I didn't even know until like 20 minutes ago. I was like, here, we're doing a podcast tonight. It's a Monday night, I was recording this, obviously, out late. And I was like, I think you're still, you're still in Scotland. And I was trying to arrange the times and stuff for you with your time, your plans. And you're like, no, sure, I'm sure I'm back. I was going to go home in 20 minutes. I'm like, oh, oh I, I see why you <laughs> today or last night now. How are you? Yeah, good, good. I went on a, a well needed break. Um, I went to see Coldplay in Glasgow last week. I know you went to Wembley. My God, what a show. They do a great show, Patterson. They do a great Unbelievable. show. Unbelievable. Oh, it was so good. Again, Crow Park. I think we were there in 2017. Yeah, five years um, ago. Better. Great. What? Huh? It's better now than it was in 2017. Oh, so it, much there's better. There's something better. Yeah, there's something about they, 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 they just, even the they, way the lights now worked, it was just, they just perfected it. They started to like tweak it there and they had something fantastic. Then they did the Super Bowl as well. And it was like, oh, yeah. And then I think they found how to make a show. It's not just a band on the stage fucking singing their best songs, which is great. There are gigs you go to and I've done them. The Red Hot Chili Peppers, great gigs. Mm. This was a spectacle. Like I found myself just looking at the crowd and the lights and listening to them and just getting phased out. I was just overstimulated by colour and noise and it was amazing. Like for those that went to Crow Park, it was like you you had the wristbands, but they just blinked. Like they just went flashy, not flashy. Like I I assume it was Sam Hamden. Like Like, they were synchronised in different sections, the different lights, the way they went. It was just like the the little bit of an engineer in me was just in awe of it because obviously they just handed out randomly or whatever, like, but the have that way working it was dead. Yeah, so they they have these wristbands. They obviously cross talk to each other or they're they're set by radius or there's a little lower F Mm. frequency in it that matches to the, but it is amazing. It is so good. And when they're singing the songs about the human heart and in the crowd, it's all the human hearts. It has just love hearts bailed out of the wristbands. He gets everyone yeah. to put their hands and it just makes a heart out of the red lights from people who are sitting beside each other. Like it's just, the crowd are just constantly involved. Your lights were flashing. It was just a party. Mm. It was like, he just had a house party in Hamden Park and brought all his mates. <laughs> was, but what a gig, what a gig. I'm sure the same skits were used in every show, but they Coldplay know how to put on a show. It was I fantastic. I, 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 in Wembley now they had different guests each time in Wembley so there was like Natalie and Brulee there was Alan Pardridge and stuff like that and I, I'm not not to be biased now but I thought I got the best one Craig David walked out I'm like ah Craig David yeah we <laughs> got we got um, hey, I was like, we, oh, got old, <laughs> we got an old we got an old older guy Collins who sang that song oh it's gonna come back to me now now that we're recording <laughs> it up, but uh, it's a, it's an old um Scottish yeah, he is Scottish. Well, obviously they stick with those things. Yeah. Um, but it was uh, was it Nathan Collins? Oh, I don't know. It it's, ring a bell it's, to me. it's coming to me. Um, but anyway, great gig. But what came of that was I left Glasgow. I was only there for the night, and then I went up to the Highlands. I, I we went up towards Inverness, Elgin, that kind of northeastern coast that they have with the North Sea. Yeah. Um, and I said on last week's podcast that this is going to be a get a few runs in, we're off the bike kind of thing. Um, I didn't get as much runs in as I would have liked. But um, I have to say, I absolutely fell in love with this place. Anyone who's been to Scotland, it's a town just outside a town called Forest, between Elgin and Forest. It's between Aberdeen and Inverness are the two major cities but it runs along that northeast mm. coast and um we had an amazing time but i went for a run the first morning i said it to the guy we were staying with i was like oh i'm gonna run down to burkhead the headland I was like look aim for the sea i can't miss you know so yes. just ran and he was like oh go through the forest and i was like through a forest i might come back for days <laughs> and part of me and this is kind of the, the development of it actually do you know what Hit the intro music and let's get into the trade-off right. between road running and trail running. Intro music, let's go. Edwin Collins. I think it could be Edwin Never Collins. met a girl like you before? That's the one. Ah! Yeah. 
yes. ever met a girl like you before. We went over two years this podcast and I never sung until now. We just lost all our listeners. <laughs> uh, he came on. I know we're jumping back to it, but he came on. I think the poor man has had a stroke or something as well. Ah. And it was his birthday. But now, God love him. He was putting all his effort to stand there beside him. But I think that effort that he made, and he was so, I think he was got real emotional as well and thanked Chris Martin for having him there and all. It was just... Oh, it's real. Really, really good. That's really a great one. That's, yeah, a great one. That's a great song, I'd say, to her love. And the guitar and all, doing the little guitar solos. Oh, it was yes. good. It was a good one. And it knew its audience, you know, like it was... It was good. It was uh, very, very good. Um, but yeah, that set me up. I was on a buzz. And I was listening to them the whole way up in the car. And I just remembering it. it was amazing. So I was in good form for running. I was in good form for running. But this is where I suppose you probably have more experience with the trails. And Ozzy, I know Ozzy Doyle. I always give him a shout out. But I'm, he's always talking. And I'm always sometimes listening. But I don't <laughs> usually take on what he's saying. Um, yeah. But he was saying about the trails, like, oh, I'll never go back road running. I'll never go back road running. But day one or morning three or whatever, I was supposed to have done a run the night before. But, you know, you have your beers and this, that, and the other. And, yes. and you're like, you know what, I'm on holidays. <laughs> Agreed. Um, but then I did say, no, look, you know, beautiful mornings. I'll get up early. I'll get my runs in. Um, and by the time I'm back and squared away, no one will even be out of bed. And this was like, I wasn't talking a seven o'clock start. It was a nine o'clock start. So... Um, off I went and I knew from Google Maps that if I turned right at the end of this road it was on this big long road main road into the headland and that was me and if I got lost just turn around and come back to the same roads that was that was the plan or the gist and I knew as I was heading out the sea was in front of me so as long as I kept heading in that general direction I'd, I'd reach a beach at some point point. Um, and that's exactly what I did and I ran the roads and I got through that Again, I've been on the bike a lot, not along a long distance, got through that 5k and I was like, whoo, oh, running is hard. <laughs> <laughs> and then I ran around the town and I stopped at the seafront and I got to about 6k and I stopped at the seafront, took a few nice photos. And it was one of those kind of, I suppose that the, the cycling has helped for when you stop for a coffee you still cycle 60 kilometers, even though you stop for a coffee, Do you know, like yeah. you, the cycle still happens. So I stopped for a few minutes at the beach and took a few photos, relaxed, let my heart rate cool down a bit. And I did this weird thing. I haven't done it in so long. Stretching. It was amazing. <laughs> like, where is he going with this? Yeah. Yeah. I, I took time. I had a stretch. The sea, it was just me in the sea mm. and the waves were crashing in, the tide was in, it was lovely and I could see for miles all the way along the coast in both directions out to another headland and I just sat there and stretched and cooled down a little bit and then toddled off on the way back and as I was on the way back, I was like, oh, I kept seeing this forest and little tracks and people going in with their dogs and I'm like, it looks good but I could end up in there for days. <laughs> so, um so you know when you go into a forest and all trees are in rows and you don't know which row is which at least with the road is a sign or there has to be yeah. a junk at some point so I was heading back and it was only when I was on the run back I was like oh my god I was looking down to the bottom of the hill I was that clueless and where I was going I didn't realise I was running up a massive headland the whole <laughs> way up I was like no wonder why I was bollocks after 5k <laughs> so I really enjoyed the run back getting a few old runners niggles from things not working like they used to and uh, mm. but come the next run they were fine you know it was but it was one of those was like oh maybe let's not push it today so we got an 11k run in just road running that was it that's a lot of hills though like you, you haven't, you've yeah. done a lot of training, but you haven't done a lot of road running with them now. So like, and I know you've done a marathon before and, and you've done plenty of marathons before, but such a, a 11K for your first, or, you know, with, with the amount of hills and stuff in it is, is a lot. The, the hills, especially, I, I don't know the exact percentages of it, but it dex, definitely makes it a lot tougher on the body where those niggles will show themselves up more. And when you, when you add in hills, even with a 10, 11K run, you're going to feel it. Yeah, and it was something I didn't even realise. I was so excited to be somewhere new. Macaroni, I didn't yeah. even realise I was going up a hill until I turned around. And then I was like, holy Jesus. <laughs> From the moment I left the house, I climbed all the way to the headland. And then the way home was easier. I just had the niggles on the way home, which slowed it down. But if I hadn't had the niggles, 
it would have been a great run home. Um, but it's um, I was actually just trying to have a little scan here and see. Uh, it was the first time I've actually put up photos on on Strava for the runs that I've done, like because the scenery was absolutely beautiful. I saw some um, of the stories on the Any Given Training Day thing, Instagram yesterday. I was very surprised to see there were story updates and things. I was like, I didn't put them. What's going on? Yeah, here? yeah. <laughs> Man, I a lot better view my stupid face. <laughs> I actually had something worth fucking posting. About, <laughs> to be honest, um, it was really, really good. Like it doesn't seem a lot, but over eleven k, uh, there was an elevation gain of seventy five meters. Right. So it doesn't seem a lot, but those seventy five meters came. Some of it was easy and gradual, and then some of it came quite sharply. But Steep, yeah, yeah. So it's not massive. Don't get me wrong. Like. And Dara is running over mountains and stuff. Like I'm not saying it's hero stuff, but I didn't realize I was climbing all the way. <laughs> you're <laughs> for like, a flat six k oh, running on the beach. Yeah, and also in your yeah. open hills, it's, it, even the mindset it, it's challenging. But the downfall I had with it from being on the bike, particularly when it came to the road, and I think this is why on day two I had much a much better time. Um, I knew it was, and it was in miles as well. So that kind of kept me going. It was three miles to the headland. I was like, 5K, easy. But when you're running on the road, I was like, oh, if I was on the bike, I would have been here by now. <laughs> and, and that was Oh, just, you're in that mindset. That was just playing in the head. I was like, oh, you can't start thinking like that. There's a long way to go. That, that's danger um, zone. Yeah, so that kind of it trickled in a few times. But got back, enjoyed it stretch showered the next day i was like ah i won't run today because i wanted to but then i didn't want to push it i didn't want to be silly it's all about training the next day but this was one day i said no we'll let the knees recover and we'll see what happens tomorrow and then the next day i was feeling a bit sorry for myself and i was like will i maybe i don't know katie was going horse riding um she was going horse riding with some woman and i got into my running gear and I was kind of like, oh, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll go for a walk with Brian. Or, you know, like I was mm. seeing what I would do. And then he was like, right, I'm going to drop you down to the forest now. You can fuck off in your run. I was like, oh, <laughs> right. So, yeah, I'm gone. <laughs> and oh, the thing course. is, he dropped me to the forest, which meant no matter what I did, I had a 2K run home. So <laughs> I was like, right, well, we're going for it. But I set off into the forest. And again, all I knew was general direction. I knew if I head in that general direction, if I take a right, I know I have to take a left, then a right. You know, like, mm. as long as I keep trending left and right, left and right, I will make it towards the headland and the beach. But when you're looking at the little twigs coming out, you're slightly up this hill, you're downhill. This forest was amazing. The, the whole headland to headland, probably about eight to ten miles long, okay, has a forest that runs along it. And in that forest, there is trails, walkways, picnic benches, you name it, everywhere. Now, it's a managed forest, mm. but they've managed the path. You know, they've managed the pathways around. And it is brilliant. There's people on horses back going through all the forest. That's what Katie did that day. But I was running. I got to the headland and I had 5K in the bank. And I just popped out on the beach. And I mean, it was just miles of beach. And I was like, oh, I have to go down there and I could yeah. see stuff in the distance. There were little World War II pillboxes along the beach that they had in case they were invaded from the north with all these concrete stones. It was kind of like the inverse of Normandy. It was they were expecting it to be done to them. So they set up the defenses and they're still okay. there. because They're solid concrete. But I could see lots of them in like a, a tight group of them, which was near the base. Uh, and I was like, do you know what? There is a target because when you're on a beach, it's like how far is a kilometer? It's almost impossible to know how far you ran on the mm. beach. And I just said, I'll go for there. So I ran along, people with the dogs, waving at people, everyone was so friendly. I was like, this is brilliant. Got my, uh, by the time I got down to this beach part, I had 7K done. And I was like, I think that's enough because I was like, I had loads of energy. I was like, oh, I'll go another bit. But then at some point, everything's going to say, yeah, you're done now. And I'm still 8K <laughs> to get home. So, but I had all the thoughts coming back of maybe if I just ran to the other headland or maybe what's around the next corner, which is really good to see just on the second run uh, for someone who didn't want to go running. But then left the beach, got back in on the trail. Uh, left the beach, got back in on the trail. And then you're just running. I took narrower paths then where it was just cutting, zigzagging through rather than on the beaten track, like the, mm. the main path. There were so many little trails left and right. So I zigzagged across. And the forest, obviously, being so close to the beach, it's not like mo it's it's soft sand. 
sand and muck kind of underfoot. Right. So it's really springy. You don't get bedded into it. You just kind of spring out of it. And it's light on the feet, light on the knees. I ne- I didn't have a single problem, you know, or a feeling or a niggle. The only thing I had was I was tired. Um, <laughs> but it was absolutely amazing. Like kilometers, honestly, would click past. And I was that focused on, am I going left here? Am I going, yeah. Oh, it was brilliant. It was absolutely brilliant. I was so excited afterwards. I even texted you to say, we're coming here on a training camp. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But it was amazing. And then I just kept kind of sticking to the plan and the rough ideas of guides and times. Then I just spat out at the end of the road beside the house. And I was like, this is brilliant. And I should have done it the first day. But it was nice. It was nice to see the comparison. And yeah. that, that run ended up nearly 14 kilometers. And I suffered on the 11K one. On the 14, I kind of was like, as I was coming down the path to the house, I was looking at the time. I was like, mm, we're going to drive around Loch Ness. So I don't want to take too long and all that kind of stuff. But I had it in the head. I was like, if I go left here, I know a route that can add on another 4K. That's 18K. So to be getting to that stage was a really, really nice feeling. And I suppose to add it into people, if if you're unsure about running, road running is dismal. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It is. It is a hard slog when you when you know when you drive something or when you cycle on something, you know, you can cover that ground in a certain amount of time. When you go somewhere where you haven't got a clue about what is literally under your next step, you have to be kind of thinking of other things. I just found it absolutely fantastic. It was. Yeah, it was just great. It was so good. Freedom to it. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I got that, that the run the line was the first time with a proper trail run, the, the 26K, and I was like, I pulled myself back or whatever. But when you're just lost in those trails and the trees and everything else, and you know you're going on some, it, it's not just straight. Like, your mind is constantly thinking about where to step and stuff like that. And you, you, you always have, to have a certain level of concentration there. With a road run, road, road run, you can just zone out. Uh, it's the same roads and stuff. And to your point, it's just, it can be dismal. Whereas I, that's what I'm starting to tell more people: try, try a run, see, see how it goes, and and uh, like that, that concentration, that that constantly thinking, folks, and while, while enjoying the run more, it's the difference between you struggling at 11k and you able to do an eight, a 14k and feeling like you can do 18k. Like I could totally relate to that. That sounds mad to people who may not be doing more than 10k at the moment, but a lot of it is mindset. We've talked about it plenty of times in the podcast. You know that that 40% rule, and and sometimes to get involved in those distractions like you did with the trails. I think makes a big difference yeah and we talked about it last week about the music so yeah. i had cold play on the road run but i was him and home about my run the second day so i never brought the headphones and then oh. he made the decision for me and threw me out at the edge of a forest and said off you go off you go son and i was like <laughs> all right <laughs> so um off i went but because i it sounds real weird to kind of go down this road you were just you could hear the sea the trees you could hear the dog barking you know like it was there was so much going on that was like heightening the senses i didn't need the music you didn't need that else and it was so good and it was just peaceful in a weird way like just hearing the breath you know when you walk down a forest clearing you can't hear anything else but you Mm. You can't hear a car you can't hear anything then you come around the corner you're near the beat you hear the way you know like it was it was really good it was really really good it was um and especially when you don't put a hurry on yourself, like I seem to watch click or go through the forest. It doesn't pick me up. It's at a eight minute kilometer an hour, you know, but yeah. I didn't care. I was like, ah, I, I really didn't care. It was just how long can I just find my way around these or meander around this? And to be honest, if I went out 10 days in a row, I wouldn't be able to do the same route. As right. in, if I just took a different left, I'd be off on a different, gar- mm-hmm. literally a different garden path. I'd be, I'd end up adding on another four or five, six K and coming around another way. Like it's, mm. it's absolutely amazing. It was, it was very good. Um, I've never been to Scotland before and we're not trying to turn into a travel show or anything, but <laughs> is anyone is, anyone is thinking of getting away. The Northeast corner of Scotland was absolutely beautiful. Beaches. Ah, oh, it's just amazing. It was really, really good. We got the weather as well. Weather helps. Yeah. Always helps. But it was like, Ireland as in you know no one likes to be in Ireland when it's miserable and raining but when the sun shines it was good and the sun did shine it made it made my stories a hell of a lot nicer anyway deadly deadly not to put you on the spot now but just you mentioned Ozzy at the start of the podcast and he's done a lot of trail runs and stuff and um, the people listening to this going 
this sounds unbelievable because I'm getting fed up with running. Maybe not doing marathon training at the moment, but fed up with running. We want to get back into running. You know, September to me is like a mini January in terms of people getting back to routines and stuff. If you were, if someone listening to this wanted to get into trail runs, maybe you don't, maybe you do, you're on the spot. Like, would you know of any trails around the area? Would you recommend someone like Glenda Lock or Wicklow? Or is there anywhere like, I don't know, someone like me, the Hill of Tara. I don't even know. I've never actually been there, but just pops because you're from, you're from that area. Um, are there any kind of trails and stuff you'd recommend people starting on doing? Um, do you know of? Yeah, well, the, the trail runs, look, you can you can head into the Wicklow Mountains and stuff. There are numerous. The only thing is when you go into the mountains, you're dealing with hills. So hmm. when you're getting back into things, it's probably not the nicest place to go. Right. Um, but... There is a hidden gem in Kildare called Donaghy Forest, National Forest Park. And it is the closest thing to a paved trail combination that you can do, that you can do multiple loops of. You can crisscross, run past the lake. You can sidestep, go in amongst the trees and around. So um, that's just outside Minute Clane, Enfield. It's in the triangle of the three of them. Uh, Donaghy National Park. You can, I think it's a fiver to park in. Uh, for the day, you can get a yearly pass if you're living in the area. I think it costs, it's a wheelchair pass. Uh, I think it costs 30 quid. And there are also other ways where you can sneakily park on the side <laughs> and go in. Um, but um, if I was beginner, I would look at that. The reason being, you want to bring a friend, you want to start in the exercise. There's also a coffee awesome. shop there. There's a toilet there. Until you start learning what your body's going to do over six or seven K in a forest, <laughs> you know, you should probably kind of keep them things. So that one place I know that I always love um, is, is Donaghy. It, it was one of the last latest finds I found. But even when I was running in Scotland, I was thinking when I come back for the next round of the marathon stuff, I think I'm going to start driving out there. Yeah, just mm. just to get through the hills. And, and there's a couple of hills and it's it's a nice builder. There's a couple of little steep parts, but there's nice descent. It's it's comfortable. Um, and that's just one. Um, again, because I know it, it's not necessarily trails, but it's more grass and plains. It's easier on the legs. The Curra. The Curra is, obviously, you know, you can park up anywhere in the Curra. You can take on serious hills or you can stick to the plains, which is just general just running on grass over a large area. Uh, it is that off-road running. It's it's lighter underfoot. You are running on the grass and there is countless routes you can take, laps you can take, but it's more open as opposed to true forests. Um, but it is a fantastic resource for training. And for those who look on it in Google Earth, you'll see the ranges that occur as out the back. And it is like, if there's no firing, people are, are free to walk. You know, like it is like... A lot of people do walk and train, but there are serious hills. And I mean, like almost hands and knees uh, crawling oh. up. So you can get a very serious, short hill session in. You can do varied runs, which will incorporate a lot of climbing and descending. You can stick on grass. And then there's little elements where you're just kind of running through gorse and trees and, and different things. So it's, but it's more of a, a an open run with, that's safe that you're yeah. you've open space and you've not that they're prepared grass you're not running long grass kind of like the phoenix park in elements that someone has cut a trail wide enough for a truck to fit down but it's a grass route that you can run around and it, it's it's pretty good in fairness it, it is very good and it's something to you run along the n7 it is a nice one yeah, um I, I, but there too two that i know and glendalock glendalock would be the last one i'll say to you sean the lower level of glendalock and um, there are some hills you can take on but again it's a prepared pathway it's gravel it's good so no matter what time of year you go yes you may be wet or cold but there are good loops of 5k that you don't have to go into the hills for you can just stay on the lower levels and get a good kind of run around the lakes and stuff like that stuff that just looks the, the scenery is just amazing so but trails i know you're looking for exact trails but when we're talking beginner stuff I would kind of stick to them kind of flatter areas that give you enough to think about an old coffee shop that you can enjoy the experience with a friend or two. Um, and you're not, you know, there's something to look forward to your day out in the running and, yeah. and, and getting into that stuff and the hybrid of hiking and running as well, you know? So, well, it's, it's sorry, that, probably a tangent, but that's, that's no, no, hundred percent helpful. Cause, cause I, as I really should have a few answers for you myself. I, I don't cause I'm someone that's going to do a big eco trail uh, in, in four weeks time. 
But um, I know that one actually out in Bray has different options of people on the build towards a race. I think there's a 10K, 30K option as well. Could be a 50, then 80. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure, but it could be a little bit short notice for someone who wants to train in four weeks' time. Um, but they're doing they're opening up registration for Run the Line this week, uh, that Dublin Wicklow Mountain Way, where there's a 26 and a 13K option as well. So if, if people are listening to this going, geez, I'd love to get a few trails and have something to aim for. Um, having done Run the Line myself I could, before, I could definitely, definitely recommend that. Uh, it's, uh, it has all the things that you're saying there. There's different trails up and down through the forest. You don't know where you're going to end up next. Uh, and you know, you're, Like one minute, you're, you're deep in the middle of a forest. Next minute, you're on top of the mountains and you can see the entire city of Dublin. Like It's just absolutely unbelievable. I think those kind of things is what trails bring as opposed to regular road running. Obviously, you can do a road run and end up on top of a hill and see that anyway, but it's, it's not the same as being in the trails and Kind of similar to the Quest, I thought as well. Just, just that randomness that that a trail run can bring. Yeah, and it's like the hills are a big thing, and it is something that like that's why when we said for a beginner, someone to get into it. Coming into winter, you don't want to be like the mountains get cold. You know, it's mm. right now, and it should stay good until the end of September. So maybe it's okay. I but a month or two anyway. Yeah, you you, you might get into it, but in the depths of it, that's kind of where I was going with. You know, when you're in the badness you don't want to drive too far you don't want to yeah. be too far away from your car all that kind of stuff but as you do progress there's coming into new year like even local enough in the, the dublin area i'm sure there's going to be people around the country that are going to be screaming at us to talk about this trail and that trail and absolutely send them on to us and we'll we'll add them to the, the long list and we might even try a few ourselves but uh tick knock in dublin is a great hill training session for those thinking of getting into the mountain running and the mountain trails because again it's a prepared road that's wide enough that you can pass people. You can maintain good, tra- you know, consistency as you go up. Then there's undulating ground as you continue, and from there, you can from the top you can actually head off across a few hills right. on nice little trails, and then come back down through the forest back to your car. Um, so like as you as you get a bit of confidence and are willing to to head off up these, walk up them first. You know, go for a stroll around them. There's a five k loop. There's a longer loop. You know, you'll see others trailing off and. Uh, yeah, it's it's just another one to add in there. I think it's fantastic. It is lovely. I suppose to your point, as it's colder and less just to, to tackle the rest of the country, um, looking for local national parks. Like I know when I was down in Clarny, running the Clarny National Park and you can kind of go off the beaten track a little bit there. That can give you a little bit of a trail run feel without feeling too lost and not knowing where you're ending up or how far it is to get back home or worried about weather conditions and stuff like that as well as much. And to show how cultured we are, Curraclough Beach and Forest is probably the similar place to what I've done in Scotland there. Uh, you can definitely cover about, a, I think it's about a 12K through the beach and forest. Um, again, prepared paths through the national, it's kind of a nature reserve. Uh, they have a massive forest there on Curraclough Beach and it has nice pathways through it. So if you're down in the Wexford direction, definitely go down there for a run as well so there, that's that's a lot of where i ran and know anyway but, uh, yeah unbelievable jeff on that note before just before we wrap up the podcast eric the next time we're talking to you in the podcast you will have started or have done missing the man head am i right in saying that if we could record we probably will record before i go but i will be packed and ready to take on the longest cycle i've ever done in my life ah, and on although, that bombshell. oh the although. greatest thing the greatest thing I was on Strava and I seen cycle 100 kilometers in a week join challenge cycle 200 kilometers join challenge. <laughs> uh, in a week I'm going to be the greatest hero Strava has ever seen unbelievable but, uh, that's it that's all coming in a week's time and on a better note than that thank you once again for listening to this week's episode of the Any Given Run Day podcast that's it for myself and Eric take care bye